Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today is one of the huge milestones of this project, I guess, business, uh, because all coral farms need broodstock and uh, that's what I bought, uh, just under £3,000 worth to be exact. Uh, there is a little sneak peek for you. That is a lot of coral bags. There's a few things in there which um, won't be grown, uh, there's a couple of fungi and stuff like that, but I'll show you um, some of what I got in a minute, it's just acclimating to temperature. Um, I've just realised, obviously, I'm wearing gloves in, in uh, preparation for uh, dipping and uh, any fragging I need to do. Uh, what I've realised is, I am incredibly lucky that my work attire, this is a work day for me, is these, and then shorts, and I'm not even wearing shoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> who else gets to claim that as their work attire? Um, I'll give you a quick update on uh, what's going on with the systems. You'll see that the bacterial bloom is still... You know, it's still there, it's getting better, but it's still there. I've moved a few things around, and uh, so let, let me show you. The first thing you'll notice, and probably the biggest difference, uh, is that the frag racks are in. So that has made a huge difference with regards to um, both space, because as you can see, there is a, a lot more space in here now uh, than there was previously, but also flow. So the MP40s originally were only set to, I think, uh, 20 or 30%. Uh, whereas now they are set to uh, 70% and then once the racks over there are weighed down properly uh, because the flow was so strong that it's moving them around, I'll increase it to 100%. It's just so nice that I don't have to keep picking up frag which have been blown over and that means that I can now uh, put uh, more fish in because the reason I haven't had fish in is because they, uh, they have, a, they, they have a, uh, a habit of picking up corals and moving them around uh, which isn't ideal. Uh, one of my Acropora hasn't done overly well. Uh, I know why, um, because uh, the radions for the tank at the bottom are much, much lower intensity uh, than the ones at the top. And that Acropora was originally placed down the bottom, uh, which was a mistake. I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to shock the uh, the coral because it was, it was a, in a, a quite a low light setting in my uh, 1000 litre tank. It was at the very bottom of the tank. So I didn't want to shock it, so I put it in the bottom, and then a week later it's browned out, which I believe is because of uh, it being in low light. Uh, and there was one other Montefora which did exactly the same thing. Um, this this whole journey for me is about telling you like the truth. I want I want you to see every part of this build, and there are good and bad parts to uh, to everything. I haven't actually lost. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I did. I lost. I lost a couple of the of the uh, the hammer coral heads. But other than that, I believe, considering this tank was never cycled, I have done surprisingly well. What I've done uh, is every single piece of coral now uh, has is attached to a frag plug, even the big pieces, even if it's only one, one section, uh, just so I can slot it into the rack, and uh, and it allows me to, like, seriously, uh, seriously increase the flow. And there's a pretty similar story with the bottom tank as well. Um, so now that I've moved a lot of the SPS up to the top tank, uh, I have decided to uh, organise this tank much better. So obviously hammers and frog spawn will be here. Uh, the torch crawls will be there. They're all they're not they're all different sizes, which is why they're not as neat as the rest of them. Um, but again, these these corals were at the top, and you can see some of them were slightly some of them are slightly more uh, lightly coloured, which I, I believe is because of the intense light. Uh, it's morning, so everything's only just waking up. You can see that gradually, bit by bit, I'm getting there filling the systems. Um, and I've got some of the uh, the pieces which I'm growing out over here. I literally can't wait to have um, the, both all, all of this system full, because then obviously I can start the next system. There's no point in me starting the next system until uh, until that one, until these are, these are up and running, obviously, because of the electrical cost. Um, what I will say, is so this system will be uh, LPS and soft corals, and then that system will be predominantly SPS, the one little system over there. So um, you can see, Chai uh, hasn't killed anything, which is good. You know, he's my little rogue fish. hasn't hasn't killed anything recently. Him and the rats are getting on. Then again, they've lived together for a long time, so so that's uh, that's not the rats currently remain nameless. Uh, each of the rats have no name. So if you uh, if you would like to uh, to name both this one and then I don't know where the one up here is, um, but oh, oh there it is. Come over because he wants to be named. 
If you'd like to name the Rasses, obviously put it in the comment section below. Right, it's time for me to start opening some of the bags. Um, they've been there for about 24 hours probably. Um, so uh, it's uh, the longer they're in there, the uh, obviously the higher the risk. Uh, but so far they all look pretty good. I'll give you a quick look, um, a, little, a little sneak preview uh, to have a look to, uh, so, you, so you can see roughly what, um, what some of the pieces are. And, um, and then yeah, I'll, uh, I need to start, I need to start, start my process. So it's, it's, uh, it's time for me to get to work. Right, so before I start taking them all apart, uh, this is how uh, coral gets shipped to your shops. So you, this is a part that you probably won't see. Um, you can see that the wholesalers have these special machines to, uh, to seal each bag uh, with a metal clip, which is much, much quicker than using a rubber band to tie them. I'll give you a little sneak preview of, uh, of, what, of what we got. Um, as I said, I got a couple of fung fungiers just because obviously you can't propagate them. Although I do have uh, one fungi, which is this one, uh, which actually is uh, propagated. So that fungi and that fungi, uh, and then there is one is over right around the other side, and then that little baby fungi are all propagated by me. Um, under that baby fungi is uh, what essentially was. So there was a mother. Uh, which died, and some fungi, when they die, they produce lots and lots of little babies uh, once all the flesh is gone. So I, what I've done is I've actually cut the um, the section where the babies grow from and stuck it on this frag plug, and then every so often uh, it gives me a little a little one grows and then it falls off, and then another one grows and it falls off. Um, so uh, so yeah, some fungi can be propagated, but obviously you have to uh, essentially kill them. <laughs> uh, for, for it to be done in captivity. As far as I know, that's what all you can do. So I bought, so yeah, I bought uh, a couple of uh, uh, green ones and an orange ones. Uh, there, this is probably one of my favorite pieces and I cannot wait to get it out. Uh, this is obviously uh, an orange hammer coral. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few different faviers and favites because I've taken uh, a liking for them recently. What, let's have a look at what this big bag is. Ooh, what's this big? Oh, so this is a, uh, this is a Dragon Soul uh, Favia, uh, which you need to put under the light to be able to see it properly. Which looks like it's a very nice piece, much bigger than I expected it to be, if I'm honest. That will be one of the pieces which uh, gets fragged up pretty soon. Uh, there was one other huge piece. Look at this one. I love this piece. It's red and gold. Of everything on the... Um, of all the corals, this was the one that I was most looking forward to uh, to getting. And again, it's, it's quite a large piece. It's hard to show you when it's in the bag, but it's actually, it's, it's red and gold. Uh, it's quite a large piece, which means this is actually ready to be fragged already. And then obviously I'll keep a, a large portion of it myself. And a lot of it will probably, well, the chances are this piece, some of it will end up in, um, in the Red Sea tank, but, uh, but we shall see. Right, now I know you would have seen this process a few times now, uh, but that's because, as I said before, I literally dip everything that goes into the tank. Um, now, the, uh, the coral dip I use, which people ask me all the time, is, uh, is Coral RX. I've been using this for many years. Pests in this hobby are one of the things that ruins um, things for people. One, two, three. Um, and if I can do anything uh, to help reduce, or help, help basically increase people's um, enjoyment in the hobby, then um, and, and it keeps people in longer, and also it makes my it makes my corals a little bit more desirable. Because if you know that every single piece that goes through this, whereas certain shops wouldn't go through this and they would put them straight into their tanks, then you know that you're buying corals which are um, of, in theory, uh, potentially uh, more valuable, because they might cause you less hassle in the long run. As I said, I know a lot of people have said to me, a lot of people in the comment section seem to think this is overkill, but this is basically the very, very bare minimum. Um, and it's uh, and, it, and not only should I be doing it, even after you've got corals from me, you should be doing it as well, because then it's like a double, it's like a double um, uh, fix, if you see what I mean. Um, anyway, let me go grab some corals. As you know by now, I dip all the corals at the same time, that are the same type, so I picked all the fungiers, and then, I think I have about 130 corals to do this to, to go through this process. So you can see I'm trying to do it quickly. 
um, because obviously these are just the first the first bags. Now this um, these these ones are all are all double. So these are the these are the ten fungiers uh, which I picked, which you can see. Uh, they seem to range in in different sizes and colours. Most of them will be green, and there's a couple of orange ones. Uh, although that one looks slightly, that one, they look slightly different colours of green, don't they? So that'll be interesting to see what they turn out like. Uh, so those are the first ones that go into the solution. Um, and then after these, I'll probably move on to the hammers because they're probably the most valuable in there. And um, uh, and I, and I want to get those out as quickly as as quickly as I can. So. You can you can see that I'm not used to this. There'll be people that do this all the time, uh, which uh, which will be laughing at me uh, because I'm probably slower slower than they are. But you know, everyone starts somewhere, so bit by bit, I'll uh, I'll get there eventually. So fungiers are actually one of my favourite pieces of coral. I I've, I've always had an interest in in rare fungiers, so I have. Um, You'll see in one of the coral trays I took out of the red sea tank. I have a uh, a red one. Um, those ones will be interesting because I'm assuming they're green, but they look, you know, very uh, they look very pale. So again, I've, there's um, this process is just as exciting for me because I a lot of the time you don't really know what's going to turn up. In fact, with with these, I definitely know what's going to turn up. <laughs> right now, it's time to do the hammers. Um, I will be um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I am pleasantly surprised. Um, with what's turned up. So now when you order corals, some of the time you get to pick and then some of the times you have you have no idea what's going to turn up. So you know it's you know it's a it's a hammer coral, you know it's going to be orange, but you don't know like what piece it is. Um, but some of these pieces are really really nice. Um, I'm slightly concerned about this one only because you won't be able to see it very well, but there is um, some of the polyps have come off, so that one's going to be dipped in iodine. Um, as well, although although the uh, the second dip includes iodine, uh, but I want to get this one out quickly. Um, but it is such a nice piece. I'd never even I don't think I've ever even seen a hammer coral that's this orange. Um, so uh, I really really hope this one does well because uh, I can uh, I can see it, I can see it in my future. So that one goes in there. And then, and then this is a green one. Now, th again, this is it's it's fine to dip corals which are the same species um, together. But as I said, I always like to keep. Um, I always like to. Dig. So I, the, these aren't going in with the fungi. These are going into one of the different ones. So this is a, this is a bright green one, uh, which was called toxic green. The quality of these corals is actually like very very high. Um, I am. This is. I've never used this supplier before. I'm I'm actually pleasantly surprised by just what good condition and how nice these pieces are. So pieces like this will be will eventually be fragged, so you can, I can cut down there uh, and cut down there, so I can turn this into three pieces, uh, and then obviously I can keep one of them to, to gr uh, one of the pieces myself to grow on um, because that's that's the plan uh, where possible as much of the uh, as much of uh, the corals will be grown because that's what that's what this is about. It's about propagating um, rather than than buying them but there's the other one and then the last piece I'll show you opening uh, is this because otherwise you'll get bored if I show you every single piece is uh, I thought I'd open the big piece for you the uh, the gold and uh, green or golden yellow fairy um, so just to show you a size comparison to uh, oh it's in a second bag that's why I can't get to it so it's obviously been double wrapped, and then, so you can see, it's like compared to the size of my hand, uh, this is not a, uh, a small piece. Considering how nicely coloured they are, um, and how bright they are under under blue lights, you'd think that these are, would be a far more popular coral, but for whatever reason, they just aren't. Always red one, so I don't get confused, and uh, and I just give each each of the corals a good base. I'll show you one other bit of the uh, of this process which you won't have seen before, because uh, I actually. Uh, but I do. I have done every time right from the very beginning. Where are they? Oh, I have some. Uh, I have some glasses, which, uh, which I think you'll be impressed by. One sec. Let me show you. 
but I don't I don't wear them at this point. This is before they go into the into the uh, the tanks they get inspected. But I'll show you uh, I'll show you what I inspect them with. Right now I'm literally not joking. Every single uh, piece of coral that goes into the system gets inspected with me with these glasses. Now these are actually beautician glasses, uh, which as you can see are magnified, um, and the uh, they're actually surprisingly useful. Um, the reason they're useful is because they can see th we think we can see things with our naked eye but trust me when i got these i realized just how much um how much more you can see for example the other day there was a little tiny tiny crab on one of my acropora which has been in my 1000 liter tank for a long time um and uh and it was at first when i saw it, i was like oh that looks like an acro crab and it's actually it was a little furry gorilla crab <laughs> Which, uh, anyone who knows what gorilla crabs are, they are not good. I don't know how long it's been in there for, but uh, I caught it before it went in this system where it could have caused uh, potentially more, more, more trouble. So uh, these, anyone who, I, I recommend anyone gets these. I think they're like 20 pounds. Trust me, they are well worth it. Put them on, you look a bit silly, but when you, um, when you uh, next come to inspect corals, it's, uh, they're like game changing. So it's like having, it's like having supervision. Right now, this is the final part of the process uh, that I'll show you. Uh, as you can see, I have got my glasses on, um, and all I do is take a proper look at each coral, any imperfections, anything that would concern me. It'll be harder for you to see on the camera than it is for me to uh, to see, uh, obviously through the glasses. And then anything which looks something. This is an example. See this? I'm not sure what this is. This bit here. So anything else I'm not sure of doesn't get to stay. It looks like it's some sort of little snail of some sort. Um, but yeah, anything which, uh, which I'm not sure of gets pulled off uh, and then that's it. And then I will go through properly, not one video because I'm obviously a bit distracted, and look at each individual piece um, and make sure that I'm doing everything I can to, uh, yeah, to alleviate any problems. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I uh, just want to say a massive thank you to, um, obviously, everyone that supports the channel, uh, all the people that support me, the, uh, the channel on Patreon, because um, it makes a massive difference, even if it's just one dollar. Obviously, if you get a thousand people to donate one dollar, it all adds up, and that's how you build all this. So, um, but uh, even, the, as I said, even as usual, even the people that like and comment regularly, um, it all makes a difference because of YouTube's algorithm. So, um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy watching the video. Uh, as you can see, I've got a ton more corals to go through that process with. And um, uh, have a good week, and I will, uh, I'll see you next time.